Hey guys, welcome back to another Rust tutorial. In this video, we're going to go over how to interface with C code using Rust. So because Rust advertises itself as a systems programming language, you'll often end up having to interface with C code, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new project, and this time we're going to use the dash dash lib option to create a library instead of an executable. In this video, we're going to write wrapper code around the word exp c function. This is a function that's provided by glibc. This function basically takes a string and does a shell-like expansion on it, such as expanding shell variables, shell commands, and so on. Inside our cargo.toml, we want to make sure to add the libc dependency. This will give us access to many C types. Now let's just take a look at the code that cargo has generated for us and build our library to make sure everything's working. Okay, now let's take a look at the man pages for the word exp function. We can see that it performs a shell-like expansion on the string s and returns the results in a structure pointed to by p. This function also takes in various flags for shell expansion options, and it also returns an integer, zero indicating a success, and a non-zero value indicating some sort of error. Now let's take a look at what the word exp underscore t struct looks like in C so we can recreate it in Rust. We'll go inside user include and look at the word exp.h file. We can see this file tells us various flag options and their values, the fields of our word exp struct, and the value of the error codes that are returned. So all of this is going to be important when we're recreating this in Rust. So the first thing we're going to do is just delete all the generated code by cargo and copy over all the constants in our word exp.h file and convert it into Rust code. Next, we'll create a separate file for creating the function headers and data structures of C. We'll call the file clib.rs, and then inside we create an extern C block that allows us to declare C functions. Here we can use the types available in the libc crate to declare the C functions available to us. For example, here we have a star const libc c char, and this basically is a const pointer to a C character. Outside our extern C block, we'll also recreate our word exp underscore t struct from C. Let's also add the clone and debug attribute so it's easier for us to debug. And we'll also need to add the reparc. This basically tells the Rust compiler that we want the struct to be represented in memory the same way it would be represented in C. Let's also add a new function to instantiate this struct. And finally, let's implement the drop trait to tell Rust how we want to deallocate the memory for this struct. You might remember that there was a word free function in C that specifically deallocates the memory used by a word exp underscore t struct. And we'll also be using that in Rust as well so we don't have any memory leaks. We would also need to use the unsafe keyword here since we're calling a function to C. And C code is inherently unsafe in Rust. Finally, we can add our clib module to our lib module and build our library to make sure everything works. Now you might have noticed that I made the clib module a private module, and that's because we don't really want to expose C code to Rust developers. Instead, we want to have a safe Rust wrapper around it and expose that. So that's what we're going to do in our lib.rs file. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the cstir and cstring structs from the Rust standard library. This will make it a lot easier for us to work with cstrings. Next, we'll recreate our word exp struct in Rust, this time using a vector. We'll also create a new function to instantiate it as well. And we'll also create a update method as well that takes in a word exp underscore t and updates our word exp struct with the values from the word exp t. Here we use a double pointer c char that basically maps to an array of c strings. And we're just going to do some pointer manipulation to get all the values and add it to our vector. We use cstir to tell Rust that that pointer is pointing to a C string. And from this, we can create a Rust string and add it to our vector. Finally, we need to create a word exp function that takes in the string, our word exp struct, and the optional flags. And instead of returning zero for success and non-zero for an error, we'll return a result with nothing inside or an error with the error code inside. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to convert our rough string into a C string. And if that doesn't work, we'll just return an error code. Then we'll get a pointer from the C string, which we'll use in our word exp function. We'll instantiate a new word exp underscore t struct. Then we call word exp from our clib and store the value in our res variable. Since we're calling C code, we need to make sure to use unsafe here. And depending on if the result was zero, we return OK, or we return an error with the error code. Uh, going back for a minute, we need to make sure to dereference nptr here, and we need to make sure to call toaster here. Now let's build our library and see if everything compiles. Now that our code compiles, we can write some tests to make sure everything works correctly. To write unit tests, we can create a test.rs file, and we'll need to make sure to add this module into our lib.rs file at the very end. So first, we're going to import our word exp struct and our word exp function. Next, we'll annotate our function with test, indicating that this is a test function. And now we'll just instantiate some variables for our test cases. Call our word exp function, and we'll use assert equals to make sure that all our values are correct. So for this test case, it shouldn't do any expansion since it's just the word hello. And I'll also be writing a bunch more test cases after, which I'll show you guys, which covers a lot more cases to make sure our code is correct. Okay, so let's go through some of the test cases I wrote. The first few test cases, I check if the tilde character gets converted into our home variable. You can see that I set the home variable to some value, and I made sure to check that the strings we get back from word exp is the same as the value of the home variable. We also have some tests for variable expansion. Here I expand the home variable, but I also try to expand variables that don't exist, which should give us an error. We also have some tests for command substitution, and we also check if we get an error when we don't want command substitution. Finally, we have some tests for multiple values and bad characters.
Now we can go into our lib.rs file and add our test module. We need to annotate it with CFG test to tell Rust that these are test cases. And finally, to run our test cases, we just run cargo test. We can see that our test case is passed, so our code should be pretty good. So that's basically how you interface with C in Rust. I hope you guys learned something new. Hit that like button if you found this useful. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys in the next video.